Today at Houdinki, we're going to be launching a totally new video series. This series is focused on explaining some of the most important references from multiple different brands. We're starting with the Perpetual Calendar Chronograph, a complication conceived by who else but Patek Philippe. We're here at Madison Fine Time in New York City with Michael Safdie, who's the owner, to talk about six different references of Perpetual Calendar Chronographs. If you could, Michael, could you talk us through what, what was the very first Perpetual Calendar Chronograph? The very first was the 1518. This reference here, which Mr. Stern said was at the time an orological breakthrough. To get such a movement together with a chronograph, we could just see Ben in the early 1940s. This was quite a magnificent size case, 36 millimeter, but you would call it a big 36 because if you put it on the wrist, you know, with the height and the overall look of the watch, the collectors today are coming back to this size. So the, the 1518 is where everything started, and then we went into the next reference, the 2499, which many people believe to be one of the greatest watches ever made. 2499 actually went through tremendous phases as it started right after the 1518, and it looked almost the same with the Arabic numerals in the same case. But then it evolved to the watch that we have here today, which was the last series, the fourth series, which was basically very close to the second and third, but this was with a sapphire crystal, a little bit more contemporary. This is like a 37 millimeter. I guess you could say it's the perfect size. And then right after, really immediately after the, the 2499 came the 3970. And the 3970 was introduced in 1986 and it looks a hell of a lot like the 2499. Yes, well actually today, Ben, we have the second series. This has the DNA of the 2499 because of the leaf hands and the stick markers. It feels like a vintage watch, it looks like a vintage watch, it's in all precious metal, so it, it really has a very vintage feel, but sapphire crystal, sapphire back in most cases, it's ultimately a modern watch that has a very vintage feel. You mentioned the sapphire back, most second series came with just a solid back, but on request for the client, it came with two backs. This particular watch we have here in pink gold has the sapphire back and the solid back. Personally, it's one of my favorite watches that I wear on a daily basis. So about eight or 10 years into the 3970, we get kind of an oddball reference that was, from what I understand, not very popular at the time, and that's the 5020. It's essentially the, the TV perpetual calendar chrono. Yeah, it's a, you use the right word, oddball, because at the time it wasn't desirable at all. Amazing in time how this watch today went from, let's say, you know, a $35,000 retail to close to 200. The reason is it wasn't made in too much of a large production. And I think now the connoisseur appreciates the rarity of the so-called TV set with the Breguet numerals. To me, it's a work of art. And then in 1995, we get a totally new take on the perpetual calendar chronograph, and that we get a split second chronograph with perpetual calendar in the 5004. I was sitting at a dinner at the opening of the new salon in 2007 next to Mr. Stern, and he told me, he said, Michael, the 5004, when it's canceled, will be the next 24.99. And to me, I happen to be wearing one today, this is the spitz, as they say. It seems like, you know, the, the collectors that I'm friendly with, I mean, the 5004 is kind of like, it's it. It's really one of the watches that you just kind of have to have if you're in that kind of bracket. 5004 is just as good as it gets. This particular watch we have today has the black Arabic dial. When they first made it, they did make a lot of the black, and then they stopped completely and went to the silver. So this is resurfacing as a much rarer, more desirable dial. And then finally, we have a watch that is no foreigner to Hodinkee readers in that both John Mayer and J.J. Reddick describe this as a watch that they think is just downright perfect. It's a 5970. They just got it really right here. It's a 40 millimeter case. The market took to this very well, and when it was canceled, it's been going like very up, 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 hitting auction prices now around the 200 mark. The guys that are buying these watches are serious players that want to own the best stuff. And if you want to own the best stuff, you've got to have the rarest stuff. I think, Ben, that anyone, like you said, come to the table for this, they've been through everything already. This is it. Many of the collectors, they hit the gamut of the best watches in the world, and they said, that's it, I want to have only the best. And that's when they come to this.